morning. Now, Shane Keegan is with us to try and reflect a little bit on the achievement of Shamrock Rovers. Shane, how great an achievement is it when you have the best team and the, the best facilities and the best squad? At the same time, you still have to get the job done. So um, there's definitely like uh, a mealy mouthedness from non Rovers fans about their mm-hmm. achievement, but three in a row, you can't sniff at that. No, no, you certainly can't. Look, it is. It's, a, it's absolutely. It's, it's fantastic achievement, as you, as you say. And I suppose, to be honest with you, some of the points that you're after, after highlighting there as as reasons why it should be easier for them to win, I would say that in itself is the biggest challenge that he has. Like by league, by League of Ireland standards, lads, the quality of player he has in the dressing room is is incredible. Arguably, the strongest squad. That we've well certainly you know since I've been kind of knocking around League of Ireland, I would argue it's possibly the strongest squad that a, a, any manager has had. But that raises incredible challenges, um, and you next to never hear of any dressing room dis you know disruption or unrest. Now it might be there, and I'm sure fellas aren't happy at times, but it never never leaks out or never seeps out or you know it's very very rare that you see any form of descent from a player who hasn't started for them or who got brought off after an hour or anything like that I mean you know start from the back there he's got you know he's got probably near enough the four best centre halves in the League of Ireland you know, one of those fellas every week can't play the same applies to midfield the embarrassment of riches up front is incredible his ability to man manage all of those personalities and the egos that will come with those personality the personalities to me that's the most impressive part of, of, of the job that he's done. I think that goes a little bit under the radar. I don't think he gets enough credit for that. I, I, his man management skills have to be top class, lads. They really do, you know. Shane Hannam was pointing out as well that he's like um, there six seasons and he's still a very young man. So like we're, we're not witnessing the end of his evolution as a coach at all. He's actually getting better as time goes on. He is, he is. And I suppose the holy grail for him now, you know, it's just a bit of a pity that... They decided to handle Europe in the manner that they have this time around, um, because I would love to see him operate in Europe with a with a full deck, um, where it, they make it the priority, and we see himself test himself against some of, of of Europe's top managers. You know, unfortunately, I can understand the reasons why they prioritised the league and and why they made so many changes in Europe. But I would love to see Stephen Bradley go toe to toe with some of the top managers in Europe. With you know, because I think he's. You know, tactically, he's he's next to never found wanting any question marks that were there were there in the early days. And I understand why he had the headaches that he had early on. He was trying to figure out a way to accommodate the likes of Jack Byrne and Graham Burke in the same side and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, by I don't know whether it's by accident or by design that he, he came across his, this this three four two one formation that essentially they have now stuck with for three and a half, four seasons. But it's 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 worked a dream from day one for them, and they have it perfected. They have it absolutely perfected. Everybody within that side knows their role. Again, yeah, they have to tweak it in a little bit when they go into Europe. But League of Ireland wise, you know, and this is the thing with them, I suppose, lads, is you know sometimes they're coming up against the team, and they might have a bit of flexibility, and you're you're wondering will they go like Derry, for example, this year? Derry regularly bounced between a back four and a back five. Shamrock Rovers, you always know what way they're going to play. You know the shape, you know the formation, you know the style of play, you know all of that. You can do all the homework that you want and all the work you can on the training ground to try and prepare for that. And yet very, very, very few teams, even in knowing on any of that, are able to, to combat it when it comes to the 90 minutes on, on the pitch on match night. I think I remember even there was a game uh, probably to like mid to late, late August when they beat Dundalk three 0 at home, Shane, and there was like that was a perfect example like their style of play and attacking from the back and attacking quickly as well. Uh, like what we mentioned there a moment ago that the fact that I think it's Rory Gaffney and Graham Burke have have nine league goals each and, and like to secure a, a league title with none of your strikers having broke double figures, never mind breaking twenty goals for a season, uh, is quite something. But it's testament to. To, to the style of play that they haven't needed that that uh, striker with 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 loads of goals to secure the title. Yeah, you could argue that they're they're a system based team, and they, again, this is hugely to his credit that with all the star names and all the star profiles he has in his team, they're still a system based team. They're not based on individual moments. It's it's everybody within that team, as I say, has the role. And I mean, the shining example there is Rory Gaffney, as you said. Like, where else would you see it that the centre forward in a star laden team and a team that, you know, has, 
you know, won a league title pretty comfortably. You know, anywhere else in Europe, that guy is expected to score, you know, 20, somewhere between 20 and 25 goals. Rory Gaffney has scored nine, and I would be shocked if he doesn't win League of Ireland Player of the Year. <laughs> Because he's been outstanding at doing everything the centre forward role requires at Shamrock Rovers, and because there are so many other quality players, they're not looking for a Haaland who just gets on the end of things and pokes at home. They're looking for somebody who brings the most out of the two guys that are playing in the ten behind him, brings the most out of the the incredible attack and wing back options that they have. Um, and Rory Gaffney has done that all year. And as I say, look, Jack, you know. We probably see a little bit of a difference in how they play as opposed to when Jack Byrne is on the field, but not off, but not on the field. Any other role, any player missing within the Shamrock Rovers team, and it's just, OK, well, we bring in somebody else and he knows what the job spec of that role is and the band and, and, and the team just plays on and plays to the usual high standard, no matter who you are. As I say, a little bit of a caveat for Jack, maybe, but... Again, it's you know it's 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 fantastic what they're doing, and you know it's too easy to say that of course they are should they have more money than anybody else. They didn't have a, they didn't have more money than everybody else when he started when he came into the role, lads, and they didn't have more money than everybody else when he won his first league title, um, or certainly didn't have you know I would I would argue they certainly didn't have the biggest budget the year he won his first league title. It's the same as it, it's a very similar argument to Stephen Kenny. You know, by the end of Stephen Kenny's reign at Dundalk. He had all the best players and he had the most money. And people are saying, oh, well, sure, it's easy for him to win it. But he didn't when he won the first one or two. He built up his own armory there of players. And, you know, they have more money because they kept winning titles. Yes, Dermot Desmond came along and that certainly helps things as well. But my point is, you know, he won a league title when he didn't have the biggest budget. OK, he's winning them now when he does, but he had done it previously without it too. At uh, that point about <clears throat> playing uh, the best team in Europe, it, it actually... In a weird way, the success, hopefully, of, of Derry and anybody else who might come along next year might make it less likely that he's able to do that unless the squad gets bigger. So what's the future there in in that aspect? Like it, A more competitive league will probably mean that it's less likely that they do try and go after points in the European, whichever league they're in. Yeah, and, and, and that's a killer. And as I say, I don't know what the, the solution is. Uh, like I think we're, we're probably a long, long way away from our, uh, us having a a coefficient at the league where the top two managed to qualify for, for Europa League and like that's essentially probably what we need now because we are going to have two superpowers in the league for the foreseeable future and I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works. This this is the issue. You look around Europe at the the likes of your your sheriffs and, and these various different leagues that have one dominant team. They have one dominant team because that team is going to win, the, essentially is able to win the league with their B team almost, and therefore can play their A team in Europe. Um, but because Derry are so strong and are going to continue to be so strong, Rovers, you know, Rovers will have to continue to be at their very, very best in the league to, to stay winning it. And, you know, one season, you might survive, I would say for Derry, Shamrock Rovers, with their current budgets, you might survive one season without being back in, in Europa League. But like two would cause, would cause serious, serious question marks and maybe a rethink about how they, they structure the club. So they've absolutely got to prioritise the league first, which as I say, is, is really, really disappointing because you know the quality of player, the quality of manager, you're licking your lips at the thought of them having a, a real, real rattle at, at, at Europe. When did that period, I was chatting to the lads before, that period where, where I was in a role at Dundalk, lads, we'd, we had the exact opposite situation going on. Now, <laughs> That the Dundalk experience probably is one of the reasons why Shamrock Rovers have decided to go the route they have because Dundalk, we did prioritise Europe. We gave Europe a right good rattle, got you know got quite far in it and picked up a lot of money from from that and all that. But in the process, failed to qualify again for the Europa League for the following year and kind of everything unravelled and they're only kind of fixing that now, you know. Yeah. I suppose, um, Shane, uh, Stephen himself and Rovers fans might not thank me for, for this question, especially the morning after they've secured another league title. But, uh, and look, maybe I am being a bit premature linking him to a, to a, an Irish job at this stage, given he is only 37. But like we've seen him linked with, with clubs like MK Dons and, and like Lincoln City across the last couple of years. Like, Is he getting to a point now where the calibre of club he's going to get uh, linked with is going to be slightly, slightly increased and, and higher than the MK Dons or, or Lincoln Cities of the world? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And and I do think it is very important to go back to that decision. That was 
that was a huge, huge decision in the short term future of, of, of Shamrock Rovers, Shane. It really, really was because, you know, you look and you think, well, what could go wrong for Shamrock Rovers? But Stephen Bradley leaving and going across the water is definitely top of the list of things that they would look to avoid because inevitably he seems to have very, very strong relationships with some of his really real key men. I think if Stephen went across, I think you would potentially see two or three of their very best players following him. So it's a real lose-lose situation if he did go across. And those offers possibly, well, almost certainly will come again. I think they, they certainly will because he's... You know, he's operating at such a high level now that he has to be catching eye, uh, eyes. And as you say, eyes possibly, probably even higher up the, the food chain than the ones he already caught. Um, look, we're all aware, and it, it, it deserves mention as well, that Stephen has done it certainly over the second half of this season um, with the backdrop of the, the family health issues that he's got going on at, at home with his own son. And I know everybody in the League of Ireland would, you know, one, be wishing them the very best look on that front. But two, you look on... In amazement that he's managed to maintain the focus that's required to do the job he's done. I'd be a young fella here at home, you know. I, I I dread to think if if he found himself in a similar situation to Stephen's young fella, would you know? Would you be able to 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 stay focused and stay delivering the goods in the manner Stephen has done? That that is, you know, incredible that he's done that. And I think, you know, that situation will you know inevitably have an effect on what Stephen does over the next few years. I think he will be very very conscious to balance his family's needs with his own football and needs and. You know, I think that will see him stay put and stay in a role that's closer to home and a role that he knows exactly where he stands. So I, I, I would be very surprised to see him leaving Rovers over the next year to two years, to be honest with you. But beyond that, um, yeah, look, the sky's the limit for him. He's a fantastic manager, as you say. He's still incredibly young for a fellow who's achieved all that he's achieved, you know. Shane Keegan, good stuff. We'll leave it there. Thanks a million. Cheers, lad.